Okay, I will call this meeting the Summit Waller Community Association to order for Tuesday, June 1st. And first time on the agenda is the approval of the board meeting minutes from uh, last month. Do we have anything that uh, needs to be added, changed that we haven't already taken care of? Do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from last month? I so move to approve so the meeting move. minutes. Okay, so Gabe has moved and Larry, was that a second? Yes, sir. Okay, so Larry Vaughn seconded. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the meeting minutes from, uh, oh, and I should have changed the, uh, Larry, you missed that on my uh, agenda. I didn't change the approval of the meeting minutes from April to May. Uh, <laughs> so we approve the meeting minutes from May, all in favor? Raise your hand, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are adopted. Um, let's see, treasurer's report. Uh, we received that in the email. So I will ask for a. Uh, let's see, do we need to have a motion to accept? You can either go one at a time or you can just do both of them at one time. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to accept both the April and May treasurer's reports? So moved, Angela. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, moved and second that we accept the treasurer's reports for April and May, all in favor? Okay. And Gabe, webmaster report. Oh, it's been uh, a light before month. We go to webmaster, oh. Oh. Uh, before we go to webmaster, um, excuse me, Gabe, but uh, June is usually the month that we donate uh, $600 to the Mid County Community Center. So mm. I think that should be approved tonight. Okay, well, we can take care of that under uh, new business then. I'll pencil that right. in. Okay, Gabe. All right, so it's been a light month, uh, mostly Facebook related. Um, after the um, Orange Gate Park and the Pipeline Trail uh, updates, pretty much that's been the focus this last month. So nothing else really been going on this month website-wise. Okay, thank you. All right, current business. We've got uh, as regular item, Orange Gate Park. Larry reported 16 and a half hours of volunteer time plus 11 church members um, showed up to donate three hours of time for a total of 33 there. So that must have got quite a bit done. Larry, uh, do you have anything to add about what uh, went on? Yeah, um, uh, the church group uh, that Jen Botherworth uh, put together uh, they worked right from uh, nine o'clock right on up till uh, noon, did a great job of uh, picking up garbage along the streets, helped me pull out some tires out of uh, uh, the, the ditch on 84th. Um, and also, uh, uh, yeah, they did a really great job. Even yeah, There were even some young kids there too, and they, they were pulling their weight as well. Um, did some raking of an air, the, that area right uh, near the street on the south side of the, of the road, um, made it look nicer. Um, and so I, yeah, I was very pleased with, uh, all their efforts. And, uh, uh, this last week I was able to get out and, uh, uh, weed whack the, uh, entrances, the trailhead entrances to, uh, various parts of, uh, the park off of uh, 84th. 46th Avenue, 50th Avenue, and 80th uh, Street. I uh, just finished that up today. Uh, actually, uh, the volunteer uh, effort from my point is uh, not 16 and a half, it's 17 and 33. That makes 50 hours altogether, which I've submitted to Pierce County Parks. I don't know if, uh, you know, Scott Bird has generously donated some of his time on a regular basis. Uh, if he wants to uh, email me with his hours, you know, dates and times, I can add that on, or he can submit volunteer hours uh, on his own. Um, 
yeah, that's kind of up to him, but uh, appreciate uh, his efforts. Okay, thank you. Part. And uh, we did have a meeting last month. Well, we did. The um, County Parks Commission had a meeting last month where they apparently had an approval for what the um, County Parks wants to do with the first part of Orange Gate Park Master Plan. And it might have been a surprise to some people. Um, and I think we all have our own thoughts about it, but we do have our guest, Scott Berg. So, and he had contacted us through our uh, website about some of his concerns. So I guess I'll let you start, Scott, if you want to uh, share with us your thoughts about uh, what's happening with Orange Gate. Okay. So I have a little presentation. Um, Basically, what you know, I'm I'm pretty unhappy with what's going on, um, and uh, so I attended the Citizens Advisory Board meeting. I'm not sure if that's the one you were referring to or not, um, and was pretty unhappy with how that meeting went. And uh, so I guess I'm I'm here to to talk about my opposition to what's going on and, and basically find out, am I the lone voice in the wilderness and sit down and shut up or does anybody else share uh, any of these sentiments? So, um, okay, it says I can't share my screen. Is that something you can let me share my presentation? That would be Gabe. You want to? You should be able to share now. Okay. Okay. I'm not seeing it. Are you seeing? Oh, I am. It? Okay. Yes, we are. Yeah, we right. are. Okay. Um. So I just together some some um, things to talk about um, with what I see going wrong I guess um, so a little background on me I have two horses at high point um, I ride one or both virtually every day unless I'm out traveling with them um, uh, I do carry clippers and a handsaw and use them all the time, especially right now. Those blackberries are just going nuts. Um, and uh, as Larry mentioned, I spent a bunch of time uh, chainsawing trees after the January storm. Um, so I'm not just a user. I'm also trying to uh, keep the park uh, clear. I I really don't put in the the consistent time that Larry puts in because uh, most of the time I'm on a horse, and so um, to use things like a handsaw, I got to get off, and uh, so it's got to be a tree in the trail that I don't want to step over for me to do something like that. So. Um, in looking at the plan and listening to the Parks Department's presentation, um, I was really disturbed with a couple things that I heard. Um, so it was pretty obvious from what they presented and what's in the plan that um, they had three, three steps in their process. Stakeholder feedback, which was unanimous, near as I could tell, people want the park to stay the way it is. Then they did a survey. The survey said basically the same thing, although I think we've got some problems with how the survey notices went out. Um, you know, I don't believe anybody at High Point but me even knew there was a survey going on. Um, 
the notices were posted at a few places in the park, but it was pouring buckets at the time, so they didn't hold up very well. Um, so I question how well the survey notices got communicated. Um, and one of the things that leads me to that is, you know, just talking with people in the park, um, I have not talked to a single person who said, we need to do this development. Um, uh, most of them don't even like the trail work that's currently being done. And, you know, I ran into the crew today and they were closing a trail that I use almost every day. So I'm, I'm really irritated with the closing of existing trails. To me, that seems like a lousy idea. But they're getting that direction from whoever they work for. Um, and the, one of the comments that one of the guys I ran into um, said, you know, the old trails are like country roads. You know, they're, you're, you're in nature. And the new trails are like freeways. And uh, so people don't seem to like the character of the work that they're doing. Um, so as we've gone through the three phases of their communication, I and others have posted stuff in opposition all the way along. Um, I even had an extensive email conversation with Tiffany. Um, uh, one of the interesting things is she was pretty responsive right up until the May 18th meeting. And I have gotten no response from her since then, which that leads me to conclude, you know, uh, in the, today's conspiracy theories, that leads me to conclude bad things. Um, so uh, one of the things that Roxanne presented was their strategic items for this year. Number one on their list is developing Orange Gate. Um, so I'm, ju I'm just curious, okay, what led to that being number one on their list? Um, as a result of the survey and the stakeholder input, the number one response has been, leave it alone, we want natural trails. Um, uh, I, I'll show you the picture of the word cloud from, from the presentation and the plan in a minute, but um, a dog park and playground and all the development that they're talking about is not what I see as the high priority. So, um, so that's kind of a conflict in my mind. Uh, they seem to be uh, going gung-ho to develop, but the public doesn't seem to want that. Um, and so that kind of led me to, okay, why did we even go to the three options when the survey said, don't do that? Um, so I, that just bothers me a bit. Um, one of the things that really irritates me about the plan that they've adopted is that I don't know of any other horse trails in the area. You know, I, as far as I know, I got to drive an hour to ride someplace other than Orange Gate. We have several dog parks and playgrounds within very close driving distance. How many of those that voted uh, for dog parks and playgrounds even use the ones we already got? You know, I've been to several of them. I have a dog. Uh, I don't go to dog parks. Um, are they even using them? Or are they just saying, well, yeah, I have a dog, so we ought to have a dog park. Uh, that didn't seem to be... Um, uh, in line with what the survey said. Uh, one of the other things that, that bothered me a bit about the presentation and the plan is, you know, page 30 says there's a lot of interest in hiking and equestrian trails, but we're going to lose a bunch of that to this development. Again, inconsistent with what the public seems to be saying we want to do. Um, and until they did the three plans, the public was very consistent in, we want trails. We don't want all this development. Um, as an equestrian, what irks me a lot is 
I'm losing access to 25% of the part. That really bothers me. So here's their, their uh, word chart from the plan. You see a whole bunch of natural park, trails, space, bike users, horse, open. Where the heck is a dog park in here? Way down here. So, you know, it doesn't seem consistent with um, the plans that they're coming up with. Uh, one of the things that I've done for many years is analyzing data. And the anal analysis that they showed was really questionable in my view. Um, they um, did pretty much raw percentages from the survey responses. So if you got, I don't know, they said 300 people responded and 200 of them said, um, they want dog park and a hundred horse people said we want horse trails. And so they did an automatic, oh, well, two thirds say we got to have a dog park and one third says horses. So let's keep the horses out and build a dog park. That's a, kind of a questionable kind of analysis, but that seems to be the depth that they went into in the analysis. Um, Without seeing the raw data, I'm not sure how to appropriately weight things for a good analysis, but I don't think the analysis was really uh, as good as it should have been for this kind of a project. Then we come to the May 18th meeting, and um, this pretty much floored me what they did. You know, they, they identified all these communities of the public but they didn't take their plans to them. Um, they didn't even seem to do a lot of effort to make sure that those communities of people were included in their whole survey plan process. Um, based on the, the May 18th meeting, the Advisory board members didn't seem to even be aware that there was any opposition to the plan. You know, several people had had posted online on the parks site. I asked at the meeting, where did those comments go? Never got an answer. Um, did the did the advisory board members get these comments prior to the plan prior to the plan presentation? Um, Tiffany's presentation did not mention any of the opposition plan to the plan, uh, any of the online comments. Um, and the, and the pre presentation was all very positive. Everybody's in favor of this massive development. And, and uh, so I think that was a misrepresentation of the information that they've gotten. And so I'm, I'm concerned that the advisory board members didn't even know that there was any opposition because there was no mention of it in the meeting. And then they voted before the public at the meeting even had a chance to speak. Even taking a vote at that point seemed to me to be inappropriate process. Um, so after the meeting, I also sent a bunch of comments to Tom Utterback, who appears to be our representative for the Summit Waller area, um, got no response from him. So that's all I've got. I'm just curious, am I lone voice in the wilderness and I really ought to sit down and shut up or have, has anybody else heard any of this? I, I'll try to answer some of your questions, Scott. Um, I think that there are some, uh, there are a few select, very uh, passionate horse equestrian users that have vo voiced their opinion on on the on our Facebook group and on Nextdoor.com. I've seen those 
comments from just a few select individuals that um, from their perspective sounded similar to yours. I wouldn't say that it's the majority of people. I think the majority of people that specifically Tiffany and Pierce County was hearing from were uh, their comments are reflected in the current master plan. Um, I wouldn't say that you're the one lone voice, but I would I would say you're probably in the a smaller group of individuals that that aren't completely happy with the master plan as it was presented. Anyone else with uh, their thoughts on this process and what's being done with the proposal? My only comment would be with the uh, community advisory board. I don't know if they're actually seeking public opinion. I think that was a, more of an internal advisory board based on their own uh, thing, but I don't think it was necessarily looking for public opinion. They just opened it up so people could see what they were talking about. Well, I'll say that uh, that evening I wasn't able to attend because I was chairing my own county commission meeting at the time. Um, but it's my understanding that for any of these commissions, prior to votes taken, there should mm -hmm. be an opportunity for public comment. Mm -hmm. And so if they did not open it up for public comment, they were in error. No, they and did. That's, and, oh, they did. They, they did open it up or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Not until after they took the vote. And, and there was hmm, less than five minutes of total comment. Okay, well, I'd be, that's something I'd want to look into is when it happened. Um, also, and, and this is kind of a smaller thing, but your comment about people saying that, you know, they don't like the way the trails are being, what's happening with them. Um, I've got quite a bit of experience doing trail work and my first few times walking through the park, it looked to me to be a mess and I could see where, yeah, they need to decommission some things and improve in others. And one of the things that you wanna do when you are maintaining trails is that you will tend to go wider than what people would expect because you can't go back so frequently to maintain those. And stuff grows around here very fast. And so you will trim back farther than what people would expect. And with people who are new to trail maintenance, you have to get them used to trimming back farther than what they would think. Um, possibly in what the materials are, because I haven't delved into them as deeply as maybe I should. I've had some other things going on. But all I saw was a proposal for the north side of 84th. Did they have a plan presented for the entire parcel or just the part north of 84th? Oh, that was, no the, that, that, was, that was the bulk of the development. But there also, um, uh, plan includes quite a bit of development south of 84th. Well, south they'll, they'll north, develop the entire right parcel, direction. Mm -hmm. but what I'm curious about is, do they have a plan, a cohesive plan for the entire park piece? Yes, they do. Okay. okay. Yeah. There's that a was phase phase too. And then the other thing about the trail closures, they were talking about um, addressing some of the issues with potentially erosion control because mm -hmm. people blazing the trails on their own, they're not, they're not geologists and they, they don't know what a trail is going to do damage to a park. So I think some of those trails are being closed for that consideration. Yeah, that, that's a pretty minor point. I'm more concerned with the process that they went through to get where they are. And I guess I'm, I'm wondering why the heck do they have a place to put comments if nothing happens to them, that bothers me a lot. And, and there was no mention, uh, at least in the advisory board meeting of what's next. Okay, they voted to support the plan. Um, 
So it'll go to the it'll go to the committee next. So either that's the community development committee or the economic and infrastructure development committee. I don't know which one parks uh, goes to. Um, so there would be a committee meeting and hearing associated with that. There would be a public comment portion of that meeting as well. Then it would go to the full council and, at a council meeting, and there would also be public comment at that uh, at that meeting as well. So. I would um, either just keep asking Tiffany to tell you when those things are happening, or um, you can sign up for updates for those types of things on uh, Pierce County's website, um, if you're so inclined to follow it that closely. Uh, you just have to keep checking the calendar to see when that's going to pop up on their agenda. Or like I said, you could uh, bug Kimberly Freeman or uh, Tiffany O'Dell. And Larry, could you please address the organization's history with pushing the county to actually make Orange Gate into a park and some of the proposals for Orange Gate? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, Don Massey has been trying to get in here. Uh, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll Hmm. I'll make those comments right after Don Massey has a chance to uh, chime in on what he wants to talk about. I, I think he's going to focus on dog parks because that's an interesting topic for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've got a couple of questions for you, Scott. Uh, you made reference to the fact that there is a number of parks around here for dogs that you have uh, uh, taken your... Uh, kids too and you also made that you got to drive an hour to find other trails to ride um, my, my my concern is uh, how what 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 dog parks have you been to that you think are uh, worthy of being classified as a dog park that's first question um so the, the Cal, I'm trying to think of the Clark's Creek um, and there's one in Manor or close to Manorwood, uh, Forest Green. Okay, uh, let's stop right there for a second. Those are both city parks. Name, name a whole bunch of the county dog parks. Care who owns it. They're all within five miles. Uh, have you? <laughs> <laughs> That they're yes, they're both off leash. One is a community park over uh, by Shaw Road. The other one is down in uh, down on Clark's Creek. Uh, I won't take my dog to either one because of the way they're managed. So you've got left. Uh, you've got Meridian Habitat Park. Is I was there this morning. Uh, it's very small in nature, which I understand that you you don't have enough room for your horses, but there are probably a hundred times more dogs that would go to a park than there are horses that would go to a park. Uh, Habitat Park is one third covered by uh, blackberries, so there is uh, there's there's no use for it. The other uh, Pierce County Park is uh, Chambers Bay. That was not built by the county. That was built by the private organization Sundogs of University Place private members. It is maintained by Sundogs. It shouldn't even be called a Pierce County Park. So they and they gave away uh, Lakewood when Lakewood became that's the only decent dog park in Pierce County. You front for a place, uh, Frontier Park. How many millions of dollars have been in put into horse facilities up there? There are some riding trails, but they're probably not as comprehensive as uh, what, what is the a potential for Orange Gate Park. I am in agreement with you that I think they have destroyed the natural balance of the trails in the park. Uh, they are freeways. They have 
To me, they, they could have taken the D9 cat and run through there with one pass for what they have accomplished. I really believe, and you're smiling, I agree with you, they have destroyed the trail system in Orange Gate Park. Uh, as far as their plans for a dog park, as much as I've been able to give out at, out at Tiffany, and she, she'll run hot and cold on our answers and depending on how many weeks have gone by, the answers changed and she admits we don't know the answer. But what they have shown for a dog park in the north section, uh, I won't take my dog. It's, it's uh, specked out as close as I can scale it as about uh, 15 acres. Uh, if I turn my dog loose in it the way it's designed, I will not find her unless I have a tracking device on her. The underbrush is impenetrable by man or beast, except she'll follow a rabbit trail, she'll get stuck and she'll sit there and I will not be able to find her. And that's happened at uh, Lakewood Dog Park in the Blackberries. Uh, a dog will get caught and they got to call the fire department to come in and get a trail. So, you know, I could wander on and on, but I agree with a lot about what you say. I think the survey answers to get to the conclusion of where we're at were the results of the survey. People posted online did not carry the weight of the people that answered the questions of the survey. So there, there, that's where we're at. And, uh, Oh, the other thing is I pay a fee every year for the privilege of taking my dog to the park. You pay your expenses for your horse and you walk in scot-free, you tear up the trails and leave a trail of where you've been. Thank you. Okay, I guess it's back to my turn. Um, just a little historical note here. Uh, before the county acquired uh, the uh, 150 or so acres uh, that make up Orange Gate, it belonged to uh, the Department of Natural Resources. There were numerous attempts by uh, community members to uh, get uh, the county and DNR to, to swap lands. Uh, there were several attempts. They all turned up uh, negative. Uh, the community helped uh, DNR was going to uh, sign a lease with a mobile home developer in the 1980s after they logged off most of uh, what is now Orange Gate uh, so that a mobile home developer could come in and sign a 55 or 99 year lease. Uh, that was after a Mr. Wisney who lived at the corner of 46 and 84th uh, passed away and his house was demoed and uh, his lease expired. He had a lifetime lease for the north 40 acres. Um, and so the community rallied and uh, stopped that uh, development. And the community also got uh, everything from 80th all the way up to 96th rezoned from general to uh, suburban agricultural one acre lots. And then eventually, um, <clears throat> so that that couldn't be developed into a mobile home type park ever again. Uh, then conservation futures came along. And that's a, that's a fee that's uh, tacked on to every parcel in the county. And uh, we were the, uh, the Summer Waller Community Association was the, after we organized in 1993, we were the first organization to uh, put in an application for a very large parcel of land to be set aside as open space through Conservation Futures. And it was uh, approved over a three-year period for uh, what $901,000 for all 150 acres. And, uh, and then of course a cleanup, uh, we had to clean it up. Uh, we kind of, we did, the Summit Waller Community Association was in, is, is involved, was and still is involved on a lot of different things. So uh, we did not, uh, volunteered to adopt the park, but we volunteered to uh, help monitor it, look after it uh, until it could be decided through community uh, meetings as to how the uh, park would be eventually developed. Uh, most people, of course, wanted it to stay in its natural state. 
uh, which presents some challenges with uh, illegal dumping and homeless uh, people uh, making camps and uh, uh, illegal activities going on in the park. Um, and so we were told, I've been, in fact, I've been told over and over again through down through the years that Orange Gate Park uh, is a regional park. It's not your Summit Waller local park. It's not a community park. It's a regional park. It's uh, for all citizens in the county. And so therefore all citizens in the county should have a say in what should, uh, what should be planned to go there over the years. Um, and of course, I do realize that uh, uh, there's really no area in the vicinity for equestrian horse riders. It's a, it's a beautiful park for horses to run around in. And High Point Equestrian Center was built uh, specifically uh, near Orange Gate Park so that they could have a direct access into Orange Gate Park, which uh, they're very fortunate because uh, Pierce County Parks and Recreation doesn't uh, hasn't uh, forced uh, the owners of High Point Equestrian to have a to sign a franchise uh, kind of contract with them, and part of your uh, uh, boarding fees would go to uh, having access to Orange Gate Park. That could I expect that probably to change in the future. Um, I I kind of think that. Uh, it would be in the best interest of High Point Equestrian Center to formally adopt the park because so many of uh, the people who board their horses there ride into Orange Gate Park uh, and they have the manpower uh, with the number of, of horses that are boarded there to actually uh, adopt the park. And I think that uh, that probably could be a point to in the future to uh, um, not have to pay part of your dues as a as a fee to use the park by the by the park because I believe that the park district is going to as they develop it according to the plans uh, that they're going to be looking at uh, charging a fee for uh, uh, entities like High Point Equestrian Center. To have direct access into the park. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, right now, um, if I were to drop dead tomorrow, I think, uh, I think Orange Gate would be in trouble for a while till somebody replaced me. Okay, thank you, Larry. Um, So I think that with this, um, you know, kind of drawing out one uh, thing that you referenced as far as it being a regional park is that there are a lot of different users and a lot of different ideas for how this park should be developed. And so, you know, I'm not surprised that there's a play area because there certainly isn't anything within walking distance or bicycling, reasonable bicycling for people, even in the general area. Um, you know, for kids, some place for kids to go play that's, you know, a little more open. Um, <clears throat> and I can also understand wanting to have some off the street parking as well, which they've included in this. So, I mean, there's still certainly time for public feedback along the way in the process. And this is just the beginning of the process. So uh, thank you, Scott, for sharing your concerns with us. Um, you know, it's something I'm sure we're going to be discussing more. Larry, did you have something? Yeah, yeah I, I do. Um, has anybody talked about High Point Equestrian Center uh, maybe adopting the park? Scott, you are, you're up there a lot. That's, that's the first I've heard of such an idea. I... Not that I know of. That, that might be something to kind of think about. Um, 
we've never uh, we've had the opportunity to adopt the park, but we just have never had the manpower to uh, to do that. But uh, a large group like uh, what you find at High Point Equestrian Center might consider that possibility. Okay, so like I said, we'll be, I'm sure we'll be discussing this more in the future as we go through the process. Um, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And again, thank you, Scott, for sharing your concerns with us. Um, the Canyon Rim Estates, uh, you've all received an email from uh, Dan about uh, the appeal to the uh, Superior Court in King County. And so I'll leave it at that. You can take a look at the materials and next month you can brief us some more. I'll make sure that uh, he knows he has to have a computer. Actually, I think I'll push him to buy his own computer. I think he can afford one. Um, and the agenda item after that is the county litter campaign proposal. Larry, I left that on there just because we you had brought that up at a prior meeting. So I want you to um, address that just so that we'd have it in the meeting minutes this time around. Sure, uh, I appreciate that. Um, I made a phone call to Mark Williams, who is Marty Campbell's assistant, and talked with him about that uh, after our meeting. And the two of us agreed that before the uh, community association sends a letter to uh, the Pierce County Executive and all seven of the Pierce County Council people, um, that uh, he would uh, have a chat with, uh, he'd run that idea by uh, Bruce Danmeyer and Marty Campbell uh, to see whether, uh, you know, they liked the idea and also the timing of the idea. And he personally said that, you know, this might be a pretty good time to uh, to uh, bring that sort of an idea forward to the uh, Pierce County Council and the, and the executive. Um, but I haven't heard back from him yet. And uh, uh, when I do, I will forward that, uh, that information to uh, the rest of you. And if it's a green light, then I will start to uh, work on crafting a letter that will go to the Pierce County Executive and all seven of the uh, Pierce County Council members uh, promoting that particular campaign. Okay, thank you. And then the next item actually is probably, I put it in the wrong spot. I should have put it under new business. Um, Legal Women Voters candidate forums. So we've been contacted again to ask if we want to be a co-sponsor. Um, this is um, definitely off your election period. So there's a lot of stuff like water district. I was taking a look, fire protection district, uh, school board. There are some open seats for the port. I'm guessing probably the only thing that they would be having candidate forums for would be that would apply to us would be the port. Um, I don't recall them ever doing candidate forums that include school board, but that's a possibility. So do we want to um, be co-sponsors again, which I assume would be nothing more than through our own communication devices, informing people of the forums? Any thoughts? If, it is, if it's as easy as you make it sound, Bob, I think that would be fine with me. <laughs> And host, hosting our own forum uh, was a lot of work when we did it. So, yes, and if, I'm if not. Someone sure. else is doing it, then fine. <laughs> and I have my own thoughts about the 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 worthiness of hosting forums myself. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, it would just be more communicating with our members that their host that they have these available. It was pretty easy last time. Of course, uh, they did it all by Zoom uh, meetings and I'm not sure if that would be the same case uh, this year. Good chance it would be. Um, 
if it's as easy as it was last time, I, I would say go for it. Okay. Um, any opposition to going forward with it? Sounds good. Okay, I'll. I'm sorry. Can what? we do that by consensus? Can we do that by consensus, or do we? Need or can we? How about if we have a motion? Let's just do it clean. Do I have a motion so to? Okay, so move second. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Angela. Okay, been moved and seconded that we be co-sponsors with the League of Women Voters on their candidate forums for this coming election cycle. All in favor? All right. Opposed? And one abstention. Okay, now on to the other new business. Um, I'll do the donation to the Mid-County Community Center first because that will be quick. Um, so Larry, I believe you mentioned $600 that we annually- Yeah, that's, tra that's been our traditional uh, um, donation to the Mid-County Community Center. Okay. Um, do you wanna so make a motion on that? Yeah, I move that we donate uh, $600 to the uh, Mid-County Community Center. Uh, second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we donate $600 to the Mid-County Community Center. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. So we will have our treasurer write a check out to them. And now for the new business that we might take a little bit more time, there is the parcel down just off the um, westbound exit from 512 onto Canyon Road that is being developed as a repair shop for a trucking company. And this was brought up by Don. Don, do you want to address this? Mm, um, I don't have a dog in the fight. I just brought it up because I didn't know uh, who knew that it was coming to uh, b being, uh, I ran a truck and company for about five years and, uh, took it through bankruptcy and sold it for a whole bunch of money. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, <clears throat> there are two semis and two trailers sitting there now. Uh, the, the individual is registered business in Kent. Uh, I don't believe he has a yard. If so, it's not registered on any legal documents that I have been able to find. That's, that's immaterial, I guess. Uh, as far as a maintenance or repair facility, uh, boy, we had a pretty big shop that it took to maintain the plate of trucks we had. Um, there, there's nothing there but an office trailer. I've seen them with the hoods open. Uh, if There's a thing called a drop yard and that's for drivers that are, <clears throat> Fredrickson is a key point for the transportation. The Kent Valley is a key <coughs> point for transportation. There's no better spot in the world for him to have a drop spot for truck and trailers if the guys are in on the on the meeting uh yeah uh he he is limited or i guess he's really excluded to using that driveway just north of the westbound off ramp uh by uh, angela knows more about this by uh uh the county because of the proximity and the turning radius for access and egress. There, there's not enough equipment on site. I don't know what his plans are. The, he hasn't got an answer from the county. Uh, like I say, I don't, I don't care. I was just bringing that up for something that was, you know, d does it fit? Is this part of our uh, summit wall or, you know, boundaries. So that's, 
that's as good of information I can give you. If I could comment just a little bit. Um, it's not necessarily the county, it's the Washington State Department of Transportation that does not allow a business to have a commercial entryway into their business within 300 feet of that intersection. And so, as you recall, there was a, a person who bought that parcel was going to put in a recycling uh, business there and would have trucks going in and out of that quote residential because there used to be an old house there, yeah. a residential driveway. And uh, the county was going to go ahead and approve that. But uh, um, Dean Hayner, who lives on the back side of uh, that parcel that was just purchased, there's a house back there at the end of uh, 56th Avenue. Uh, that's Dean Hayner. Uh, his wife grew up in the old house that uh, was demolished that uh, used to be there. And um, of course, so they're they're very much interested and opposed to uh, business development on that parcel. Uh, and if if that person who has recently purchased that parcel wants to develop it into a uh, a uh, truck and trailer uh, repair facility, they're going to have to find a different entryway to get into that. I think that's why that particular individual, I understand, is uh, into negotiations with the person who owns um, uh, the, the uh, businesses just to the, uh, uh, to the north of that um, and would have to have a a uh, would have to create a, a, a entryway uh, from 100 and what is that 100 106 106 yeah. yeah yeah so um buffalo ships and then uh and then there's that uh small quick stop grocery now and Rose Performance mm -hmm. Buildings. I don't know what would happen to all of that, but uh, he'd have to have a uh, entrance off 106. Uh, the State Department of Transportation would is not going to allow an entrance off of uh, Canyon Road. Yeah, the three. Yeah, the 300 feet goes almost pretty much all the way to 106th Street East. Yeah. yeah, well, that's, you know, if you look on the map that he's shown, that's where Brody had to put the entrance in for his facility across the mm -hmm. street. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, you know, they're obviously using the that uh, off-ramp right there right now, so it remains to be seen. So I guess I'd wonder if the uh, State Department of Transportation knows that he's taking equipment in and out of that location, if they're not supposed to be using it as an entrance to it. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen him go in there in and out, but I, I know that uh, when he comes out, to about the only direction he can go is north. Uh, yep. You can't swing across four lanes of highway right there without some something happening. Happening. Uh, there, there is another tra trailer. One of them has signage on it, and it's for a California company uh, that's not. Well, it might have a business relationship with the individual that's trying to do this operation, but. I can't find any ties that's one of his pieces of equipment. But they always, they can change trailers like you change clothes. So uh, who knows what's really happening there. Mm -hmm. You know, the person who's really on top of that is uh, Dean Hayner, uh, who lives behind uh, just east of uh, that uh, parcel. And uh, he was the one that got in touch with uh, the Depart Washington State Department of Transportation. So I think uh, uh, someone should stay in contact with uh, Dean Hayner. Okay. Well, I could certainly do that. Um, 
I can too. I mean, I bugged him recently. That's how I got all the information that I sent you guys was from from Dean. <laughs> I knew he'd be on the in the know on what's happening. So. And also, if you look at if you look at uh, the uh, businesses on the uh, south side of 512, like Sherry's Restaurant and uh, the storage facility, uh, their their entry points are about 300 feet uh, away mm -hmm. from. Uh, the off and on ramps too. Mm -hmm. I guess a couple of questions then um, would be, you know, are they going to complete a purchase for the uh, adjacent property? And I would imagine that uh, the person who owns this business has money to make a very generous offer to get those people to give up their property so he has access off 106th. Mm -hmm. um, if that happens, then is what he wants to do with the property consistent with the zoning and the policy documents for the rural separator? And if they are, you know, what what would we be able to do as a community um, to maybe require some sort of mitigation so that there isn't so that they can lessen the impact to the homes that are on the east side of his property? So it actually affects. Uh... Uh, all the people living on 56th Avenue from 106th uh, South. Mm -hmm. I think Dean Hayner has uh, all of his neighbors uh, uh, well informed about what's going on. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's 56th Avenue there because it's just a couple of blocks maybe and my 56th Avenue is at least as long, but it's a court. <laughs> okay, well, this is something to watch and we'll have to keep in contact with Dean and uh, you may find out from the county what is happening. I know that Don, thank you for sending out the uh, link to what they've filed so far with the county, we can certainly sign up for updates so that we get notified anytime something happens in regard to that piece of property, any kind of paperwork that's filed, any comments, any work that's done with the county, uh, we can get some notifications on that. Okay, that was the last piece of business that I had on our agenda. Is there anything else that uh, somebody wants to bring up for the good of the order? I will. Uh, a couple meetings ago, we brought up the idea of doing some utility or traffic signal box wrap kind of artwork project. And um, when I ended up emailing or going to the Facebook hive, uh, folks in Midland had some resources because they had done something similar. Marty Campbell said, hey, I've got budget for that exact same thing uh, for later in 2021 and 2022, let me know what you guys have in mind. So I've sent him a couple emails, him and Mark Williams both, and I have not heard back. Mm. So I just bugged them again today. It could be that my emails are going to their junk folder um, since they're coming from a, a Hotmail account. So um, I will keep pressing them on the on the issue. And I, I really would like to see something that's very um, specific to Summit Waller rather than some what I'll call random artwork that looks nice. Um, I think it would be really, really nice and really thoughtful if we could do something very specific to Summit Waller that recognizes the community and the history that that is here. So I'll keep working on that and I'll just I'll let you guys know what I what I hear. Cool. Thank okay. you. Yeah. It's a great idea. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I just you drive around and they're all over Tacoma. I'm like, well, but at 104th and Waller where I go every day, there's <laughs> a boring old silver utility box. So I thought, why can't we do something really cool there? So. Yeah, well, it's caused with the, uh, me and my wife to, look to it's caused me and my wife to look at uh, wrap 
uh, yeah. signal light boxes whenever wherever we go now. Yeah, and you're like, oh, there's one, and there's, I mean, they're everywhere when you start looking for them. Mm -hmm. And with the widening project for Canyon, it would be nice if uh, we had that done on those boxes, if for nothing else, and to just make it a little friendlier looking yeah. than what the four lane, what the middle turn lane is going to do. Yeah. So Something, just something, yes. <laughs> anything. I have a question for uh, Don Massey, and... I think I asked him this before, but on one side of the street, it's uh, it's widened out with sidewalks and uh, new uh, street lights. But on Don Massey's side of the street, it's not developed yet. What's going on there? It's like not yeah. even even. Isn't that interesting? Well, uh, as the best as I can figure out is that this our side of the road from 97th, because the, the east side is finished with sidewalks up to 99th. So uh, after they get done with doing seven, uh, 84th or just below where the, uh, that water retention yeah. pond is across from the repair, when they get done with that to 72nd, then they're going to come back up the hill and address this. So eventually we may get a sidewalk on our side. Uh, when they figure out how they're going to tie this in at 104th. More importantly, left hand turn lane. And uh, I mean, it's, a, it's going to be uh, tough getting in and out without a left-hand turn lane or a turn lane in the center. And we got to call them back out for two weeks getting a hold of this Letitia Neal because there was two cars that we couldn't get out of the driveway because the idiots that paved the approaches uh, put a four-inch curb there. Uh, so, we, you know, and, and then the, I think you're getting ready to, to put the permanent striping in. They, there's a, a bike, bicycle lane of about three feet appears on each side of the, of the main roadway. And it was funny because the contractor, uh, he had two guys out there. They had the, the white stripes going down, delineating where they're going to pave. And they're painting a over with a black spray can. And then an hour later, they strung another st string line and painted the new white stripes. And I swear to God, they were about a half inch apart. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Don, I have a, I'm looking at the website for the Canyon Road project and the, the cross section that they're showing does show sidewalks and curb and gutter and lighting on both sides of the road between 96th to 84th. Yeah, we're, we're north. We're or we're south. We're, we're from, from 97th up to 99th oh, I see on what you're the west saying. side. Yep. There, there's no provision for sidewalks on our side. I hear you. Okay. You're right. You're right. We're, we're at the 9,800 block. You're right. I was thinking you're, yeah, you're right. You're correct. Hmm. You got to flip. flip. Mm -hmm. It'll happen. It'll happen. It's just a matter of them coming back and yeah, they'll, they'll I, have I to do those. They're, gonna have anything. they're not going to take any of our property because when we built here, uh, what, 14 years ago, starting out, my, the kid, uh, yeah, we, we deeded or, well, we acquiesced uh, 10 feet of frontage mm -hmm. for this, this very reason. So we're not going to lose any more property. Yeah, I think they're probably trying to figure out those sliver acquisitions south of you Yeah, well, uh, Rody, for the sidewalk. Uh, Rody right next to us here, uh, they're, they're stalled on their wedding venue. It's been two years and I don't know how many dollars he spent and they've yet to to make any progress and he's got a big uh the county wants him to 
uh, provide uh, all the costs for uh, his drive off of the canyon. And that's a big deal. I mean, you're putting 200 cars yeah. uh, mm -hmm. in, in here for an event and trying to get them back out on the highway. Yeah. Anyway, it's interesting. Yeah. I have a related update that just came out from Pierce County. Uh, I don't know how many people saw it today, but it was a news release that came out. This that there the new traffic signal that's coming to Canyon Road and 96th Street East should be activated uh, about Thursday morning around 10:30 a.m. And the hmm. of course it's weather dependent, but um, it said that the roads would remain open, but traffic could be shifted around during those work areas. So they are. Uh, just tying into the rest of the rest of the corridor, but they're doing um, work specifically at that intersection uh, right. in two days. So yeah. there you go. Uh, th that'll be interesting. Uh, uh, th those heavy haul trucks that like to run through here, and they all of a sudden see a stoplight there when they crest the hill going down. Uh, <laughs> Let me know if you can hear those compression brakes from, from where you're <laughs> I know. Uh, I have a feeling that since there has never in my lifetime been a signalized intersection at 96 and Canyon, I think it's going to take right. a lot of getting used to for a lot of people, including myself. So, well, they, 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 the better, they better turn it on flashing lights yeah. for a week to get used to it before <laughs> it starts throwing the red at them. <laughs> I agree. And they haven't they haven't put up the uh, anti compression brake signage yet either. Uh, yeah, that's correct. When when that's coming, we don't know. Uh, one last point of order uh, or news: uh, there was a big fire on Vickery Road south of between 112th and 128th, more like closer to. 128th uh, this afternoon. I think it might have been in those big where, uh, wooden warehouse type. No, it was, it was a house it was, fire. It was a residence. It was a resident, okay. Yeah. yeah, and it was about 118 in Vickery. See if any of them know about Pulse. I see. Wow. See if it sure put up a lot of black smoke for a while. Pulse point, but it worked you yet. Oh. Well, there, there's an application that you can get on your phone that's put out by the 911 group that's called Pulse Point. You can download it to your phone and you can set it to whatever criteria and it'll it'll track all the dispatches and and uh, tell you what's going on uh, from, it's uh, from Central Pierce uh, Fire and Rescue. They also posted about it on Twitter and had a few photographs. Um, boy, it's a long way down my feed. I was looking for it, but um, the house looked totally involved. Um, I'm sure it's an absolute loss to the owner. Um, but yeah, I want to say it was a little closer to 112th. Like maybe four yeah, was, or five blocks down south of 112. It was about 118. Okay. Let's see. Central Pierce Fire and Rescue. There we go. So, yeah, yesterday they had, there's an auto wrecking yard that's on 128th, uh, just west of Woodland. They had a fire there yesterday. And then the fire today was, oh, 118th and Vickery, they said. Yeah. And they have some video also posted yeah. on uh, their Twitter feed. Well, well, South Hill was behind a residence on uh, 62nd uh, in the backyard or something. They're not saying what happened, but then the, the prevailing wind carried <clears throat> it into the South Hill wrecking yard. Oh, okay. Here's, here's what... Uh, uh, pulse point looks like on your phone if anybody has seen it or not seen it. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'll add one last thing. Um, since I bike, 
um, I happened to be looking at uh, routes and I noticed that the county has, because the county has a nominal bike lane on Canyon Road south of 512, they say that's a cycling route, even though there's no way that that's safe at all, given the speeds that people drive, given the kinds of vehicles, given that the bike lane is a collector for all sorts of detritus that gets kicked across. So um, not on behalf of this organization, but I think I will probably during public comment, make some comment with the county council about what the uh, county roads department is doing in regard to putting in bike lanes because a bike lane on that's not protected on Canyon Road is absolutely worthless. It's they're they're pretending to do something that they're not really doing. They're asking for yeah. I, I I agree with you. It's a disaster waiting to happen and it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this, this is Scott Bird. I live on 96. Mm -hmm. I won't bike anywhere near Canyon. I turn on 48. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, there are alternatives, but to put on maps that this is a cycling route for somebody who does not live in the neighborhood like we do, they might try that and somebody potentially could be hurt because of it. So, yeah. Uh, the, the striping machine is right out. I'm sitting here looking at Canyon Road and the striping machine is doing its thing. Well, I believe two, two weeks ago, I don't think it's been three weeks ago, I shared with Gabe a notice I got from the county that they were going into their last phase of this section where it was going to be striping and Gabe added it to our yeah. uh, website. All right, well, if that's everything, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? I. Do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and we and seconded. We adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes. Good to see you. We will see you all again next month. All right. July the 6th. Yep. Good night.